morning with Chelsea and Denise from Poets Walk. Good morning, ladies. Hi, good morning. morning. How are you today? Good, how are you? <laughs> Doing excellent, excellent. So I am, we're super excited to have you on here today. We're gonna learn about Poets Walk, but first I just would like each of you to talk a little bit about your background and how you kind of got into, um, whether it's the healthcare field in general, um, but what led you to Poets Walk? Let so Denise go first. Yeah, for me, I, I sort of fell into healthcare after being in banking for 10 years. Um, I started with a community up in Philadelphia in their um, accounting department. I was one of the directors there. And from there, I moved down to Florida about two years ago, started at Poets Walk prior to uh, opening and started as the business office manager. And then in October, when our executive director left, um, I was offered the position of the executive director here. So that's kind of how I fell into it. <laughs> Very nice. Chelsea, how about you? Um, so I actually, when I was in college, worked as a caregiver for um, an Arden Courts community in Tampa. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with assisted living and dementia care. Um, so I ended up like changing my major um, to focus on healthcare administration. And um, I just kind of worked in various communities in the, in the Tampa Bay area um, until someone, one of my fantastic bosses said, you know what, you should really look into assisted living sales because you have the personality for it. Um, and so I worked in a community up in Clearwater for a long time and then um, came down to Sarasota and I started with Poets Walk almost a year and a half ago now. And I just absolutely love our community and love what we have to offer to families here. So I've been here since. Awesome. I can't believe like how fast time goes by that it's been a year and a half that you've been there. <laughs> I know, absolutely. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, awesome. I know right now during these changing times, you know, that you guys have had to pivot and really every day or every hour keep up with updates. And I just want to say from, from a standpoint of, of working from home, just thank you guys so much um, in the community for all the hard work that you put in day in and day out. Um, I have worked in assisted living myself and I know it's just, uh, you know, it's blood, sweat and tears. Maybe that's the best way to put it. <laughs> absolutely, yes. absolutely. I'm really <laughs> proud of our team here because I think everyone's been very dynamic. Um, I mean, I think you have to be to work in assisted living, but even more so during um, this whole COVID-19 pandemic, I think we've adapted very well and I'm proud of everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we have to with a lot of the changes that have been implemented within the long-term care environment and keeping up with a lot of um, the state mandates and the Department of Health mandates. So it's it's been an interesting journey, but um, I think after this, everything else will be simple <laughs> or at least seems That's, simple. It'll feel a lot simpler. <laughs> it's a great point. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, tell us about Poets Walk. So Poets Walk is a standalone memory care community. So that's all we do here. Um, all of our residents have some form of cognitive impairment diagnosis. Um, and we just have a really wonderful program here. I mean, most assisted living communities and most memory care communities, they offer very similar levels of care. So what I think it all really comes down to when you're comparing communities like ours is the engagement and the activity and the level of personalization that you see in their programming. Um, and that's what Poets Walk really focuses on. We actually have a social worker here in the building and she actually, her entire job is to manage the transition process when we have new residents moving in. So she actually pre-plans for new move-ins and makes sure that they're going to get to the right activities and meet the right residents that they should be friends with and really really personalizes their engagement plan. Um, and I think that's kind of what really sets us apart from other communities. And then our activity team is fantastic. Um, but we have, we can have 68 residents here. So we're not a huge community. Um, yeah. And you're currently <laughs> taking, taking in new residents? We are, so we are taking admissions. Um, we've actually been taking admissions steadily um, through the whole pandemic, but very, very cautiously. So we have been testing everyone twice when possible for COVID-19 before they move in. Um, and then our new admissions, we do try our best to quarantine them from other residents just to kind of create some distance there. Of course, that's really challenging with memory care. Um, but we've, you know, in the very early days, we were kind of 
trying to provide as much one on one care as we could to kind of keep them engaged in their apartments and you know just a lot of extra TLC to to keep them happy while trying to create some social distance there. Yeah. And the whole team has been doing that, you know, I feel like we've all jumped in just to kind of so the residents don't feel that something has changed so much so drastically yeah. that they feel isolated and alone. So we do all just jump in and try to engage the residents one on one. And, you know, all the way from that management team to the dining staff to the housekeepers, you know, you'll, you'll see them dancing in a room with a resident or, you know, doing somebody's nails. So yeah. Yeah. I would imagine like right now more than ever, I mean, I mean, because of the time and of the many hats that you're all wearing, you're wearing Denise, I'm sure 20 hats before now you're wearing double that. Um, but you're the, the bond between you and your residents is becoming stronger. I'm sure by the minute, cause you're spending so much time together and like you said, a lot of, a lot more like TLC, um, just from what's going on. So it's really, even though it's challenging times, it's become positive. I think there's a lot of positive things that are coming out of it as well. Yeah. We have a lot more Absolutely. time with our residents one-on-one -on -one. and, you know, I felt like we all had really strong relationships with our residents to begin with, mm -hmm. but this has really just strengthened that. Absolutely. And our team too, I think, you know, I feel bad for anyone who joins our team after this because we've all kind of bonded yes. so much yeah. through through this and trying to keep everyone safe. We've had such a common goal um, that, yeah. it, you know, we're very like tight-knit now. It's become like a family, you know. Absolutely. Like any family, there's days we probably want to kill each other, but, you know, we would, we would Absolutely. also we stand behind each other and we really do support each other and lift each other up because it's been a very stressful time for not just our residents, but our staff. So, we've really bonded. It's, it's been a really positive experience considering. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to jump back real quick because, um, my, with my background working in assisted living, I've never actually heard of a building having a social worker. And I think yeah. we need to hit on that one more time because it's, um, it's really unique and it's such a positive thing. And, um, most people understand kind of the role of a social worker, but it is really unique in your setting. Um, so I think it's just, I wanted to hit on that one more time. And um, what, what types of things, what does that person's day look like? So can you kind of walk us through yeah, what that social worker abs does? Absolutely. He so Heather, her name's Heather Per McNinch is our current social worker. Her official title is resident family ambassador, but she is a social worker and she's been in some of the skilled facilities in the area um, as a discharge planner. Um, Heather actually moved to the U.S. from Canada and worked for the government of Canada, providing in-home support to families dealing with loved ones with dementia. Um, so this wow. is kind of, this is her wheelhouse for sure. Um, so Heather has a lot on her plate. Um, she, she does manage the transition process for new residents, so she will... Um, before anyone moves in, I kind of give her all of my notes and my background on, on new residents. Um, and then she reaches out to their families as well and kind of creates this very comprehensive transition plan. And then we all sit down as a team. Um, it's very multidisciplinary and we talk about concerns and we all give our input um, really just to kind of be proactive and get ahead of things that can go wrong because moving into memory care is a challenge. <laughs> um, exactly. So from there, she kind of follows our, resi uh, our new residents for 30 days and does a 30 day adjustment. Um, she helps create, she partners with her activity team and creates an engagement plan for them. Um, and then she also works very closely with families and is kind of their point of contact for concerns or even when they're just having a rough day and need someone to kind of vent to. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she also is responsible for all of our positive outreach to our families. So we have a program here called the Smiles Program. Um, and it's kind of just like a reverse Facebook page. So all of our residents have their own Smiles page. And Heather posts lots of pictures and little updates and checks them into activities so that our families can log into Smiles and see what their loved ones are doing day to day. Um, it's I couldn't love that anymore. That is, that is <laughs> everything. So cool. <laughs> it's been so helpful through the COVID-19 situation too. And then Heather also kind of spearheaded um, implementing our FaceTime and video call programs. Um, so she's been, she's had a lot on her plate, um, but she just has such a heart for it. And she's so great with our residents. 
and she just she just makes sure that they have what they need and the support yeah. systems that they need that they're in place and she also does our support groups so she yes. does hold um monthly support groups monthly yeah um usually we do them monthly um actually by yeah you're right twice a month we usually have support groups yeah and then she is also montessori trained so mm -hmm. there is a montessori program for dementia um, and she is, has made up her yeah. own activities that are Montessori based and they are wow. very specific towards our residents. So she has these little activities for them that are just basically geared to their abilities. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, she's, she's I love great. it. Say enough about I think every building should have a Heather. I truly that's believe like that's like when I think back to those days, like that's like the missing link is like that person that can truly link and connect, you know, that resident to, like you said, to other residents, to the right activity program and engagement levels. I just, I had to hit back on that because it's so special. And it, I mean, you guys are phenomenal on top of that, but it makes you guys extra, you know, there's, there's something really extra special about that. Absolutely. Thank you for kind of circling yeah, back on that you. because that is, that is a huge deal that we have that. And the other thing she does is she also helps connect families to supportive services. Mm -hmm. So if they feel like they need some additional support outside of the, our community, she gives them who they can contact. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Well, I found a, uh, a really great video um, that showcases Poets Walk. Would that be okay if I share that now? Absolutely. Sure. That would be great. Okay. And this is on your website. To walk into Poets Walk and just see the open main street and to see residents in their own element is a wonderful thing. Poets Walk is really unique because we serve residents with dementia. It makes it both challenging and very rewarding because if you can reach an individual who previously was kind of locked in a world of dementia, it's just huge. Do you remember when that picture was taken? California. Yeah. Very good. The whole community is secure. We have indoor space and outdoor space, which is fully accessible to the residents all the time. This is the residents' home, and we are guests in their home. We have music therapy, arts and crafts, aromatherapy, we have outings. We've gone to the theater. We occasionally will go to the mall and walk around. We have churches come in to visit us, lots and lots of music. And my job is to try to put it all on the calendar and make it happen. And I have the best team in the world who gets it all done. Signature Touches is a philosophy of basically enhancing enhancing every area of what we do. We have um, something called Care Flowers, which is a positive way of interacting with each resident and kind of gives everybody an idea right from the start of some of their personality characteristics so that we can right from the beginning learn to work with them as an individual. The advanced technology we use is um, point of care and also point click care. We're able to monitor whether they take their medications, how much they're eating. We're able to get alerts within a few seconds of them getting out of bed and the staff is able to come in and assist them just to maintain their safety. But there's none of this guesswork about, well, I wasn't on the shift. I don't know. Let me go ask somebody. They just pull up the record and they're able to tell me. It's something simple, but it gives me peace mine. Smile is a program we have for the families to access where they can know on a daily basis what's going on with their family member and it just has been wildly popular. At any time of the day I can look and see whether Jude has participated in something. The staff make it a point to take pictures of him throughout the day and I feel connected when I can't be here and I know what he's doing. The atmosphere is so different. That true care and compassion of all the staff members from the chef to the housekeeper to activities. Anyone in this building is a true caregiver and has the best interest of all the residents. People will say to me all the time when they ask me what I do, they say, oh, God bless you. That has to be the hardest job in the world. And I say, I have never laughed harder in my life and I haven't cried harder in my life than I have since I've taken this job. I love honoring the lives that they've led and helping the families know that their loved one is here and being taken care of. So I'm about 
to start crying. <laughs> I know. I was just telling Denise that that last part of the video always gets me. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah, I got chills. I know. It is It is truly an honor to work with our residents and, and their families and that just it is She's so right. I think we can identify because we've never laughed so hard as we do with our residents, but yes. we've also never cried as much. We, yeah. you know, we just, Absolutely. just adore our residents. Yeah, so. we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here with, uh, with us today on Seniors Blue Book. Um, I'm going to post your website, your phone number, all that good stuff. So people can reach out to get in touch with you, uh, Chelsea directly. Do you want to share a phone number with us right now? Just in I, case somebody's taking notes. Absolutely. I do. So my direct line is 941-320-5693. All right. Perfect. So thank you, Chelsea and Denise for being with us again today. And I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you, you too. Thanks too. for having us, Brittany. Absolutely. Bye.